So now we'll be assigning the section properties to the elements. So first we'll switch to the front view by clicking on this icon and then we will zoom over the apartment portion and we will select diaphragm elements. So first we'll be assigning the diaphragm cross sections. So these are the diaphragm elements. Then you can use the scroll click button or this pan icon to pan towards right side. So I will select again the diaphragm elements over the intermediate support locations and then towards the last apartment location. So I've selected all the diaphragm elements and you can see all these are the diaphragm element numbers and then I will select the diaphragm section from the works menu and drop this over the model window. So this way, if, I, if you just double click on the diaphragm sections, so now you can see this have been assigned to these elements. Just double click on these diaphragm elements and I will click on inactivate button so that I can select the next three elements which will be my support elements. So I'll zoom over the apartment location again and I'll select the next three elements. Again over here, these elements will be our support elements. Again over here, these elements will be our support elements and panning towards right side, towards the last apartment. These are the support elements. So selecting all these support elements, I will drop the support section from the tree menu over the model window. So this completes the assignment of support section. Again, I will select them by double clicking on support section and inactivate those from here. Again, I will just zoom over this portion. Now I will be assigning support to mid section properties. So I will be selecting the relevant elements. So I'm selecting support to mid elements, again panning towards right side. These are again support to mid elements and the last set of support to mid elements. So these support to mid elements, I will drop these elements over here. And now I'll be selecting mid to support elements. So I'm zooming over this portion and I'm selecting mid to support elements. Again, panning towards right side. So these are the next three set of mid to support elements. And these are the last three set of mid to support elements. So I'll zoom out and I'll assign mid to support sections. Now I will just switch over to the left side view by clicking on this icon. And I will select these elements. So these peer cap elements I'm selecting and I'll be assigning the peer cap left section property to these elements. So this completes the section assignment. I'll click on this icon. You can click on this activate all icon and everything will be activated. We'll be switching to the hidden view. So you can click on this icon and the model switches to the hidden view. So if we switch and see towards the left side, so you'll find the tapering for peer cap elements is happening individually for all elements. So we need to make this uniform. So for that, you need to go to properties, tapered group. Again, for selecting the peer cap elements, we can right click and open tree menu two. So tree menu two will be using for selection of elements particularly. So I'll be opening works menu from here. And now I can just double click on first peer cap left sections and I will give a name over here. PC left. And I'll scroll down and add it. So as soon as you add it, you'll find that the start ring becomes uniform. Same way, you just scroll up, double click on peer cap right sections. Then I can give a name, PC right. Again, I will click on add. So the top ring becomes uniform for peer cap sections. Same way, I'll click on this isometric view and I will select mid to support tapered sections. Then I will give a name, mid to support tapper. I'll scroll down and click on add. Same way, I'll select 
support to mid sections support to mid taper and I will add it then we can close this so this is the longitudinal view of the bridge so these there will be two joints located towards the right side of intermediate support so we need to create these nodes these nodes are not existing in our model so for that purpose we go to the front view so we need to create those construction joints over here for that we will be selecting those two elements which have to be divided so those two element numbers are 61 and 107 which are located at 8 meters towards the right side of intermediate supports you type over here you need to hit enter so it will get selected so in the front view you can see these two elements have to be divided into two halves to create a node at 8 meters from the support location so I am going to node in elements clicking on divide so number of parts I am giving two I'm clicking on apply so this gets this element gets divided into two halves so you can click on query, query nodes, and you can check the distance from this node to this node. The distance is 8 meters. So this way you can check the distances between two nodes. So lastly, we will go to properties and we will click on change property. So here we will be defining the notional size of member, the software will be calculating which will be further used to calculate the shrinkage parameters for individual elements. So, I am clicking on select by window and I am selecting all the superstructure elements and then I will click on apply. So, the software calculates the creep and shrinkage properties for individual elements. Calculation, if I right click and go to tables, so you can see these are the notional sizes for individual elements have been calculated. Right click and close this window. So this completes the section assignment part for our model.